for more than 70 boat people bound for Australia have been turned back to Indonesia just in the month of July. Joining us live now is the Shadow Immigration Minister, Dan T. And Dan, good to see you as always. There's definitely a resurgence going on at the moment, but the government would argue they are being caught. So is that a sign that the system is working? Well, what we need the government to do is step up its aerial and maritime surveillance. We're obviously seeing a spike in attempted people smuggling. Uh, we also need the Prime Minister to stand up uh, with the Immigration Minister and send a very clear message to the people smugglers uh, that they won't be successful. The problem at the moment is, is the people smugglers have smelt weakness. They know that there is an incompetent immigration minister in place, that they, they know the Prime Minister is weak because he won't get rid of him or he's waiting to the reshuffle to do it. And so they're going to keep testing the government. And that's why uh, we need the Prime Minister to stand up and say that the borders will not be breached and we will send everyone back and he should do it today. But also he has to move with this reshuffle and replace the immigration minister because what we're seeing is these people smugglers smell weakness. And you've got to remember, Pete, this comes at a time when those coming by plane and claiming asylum reached a record level last month under this government of 2,380. Mm. So we're seeing this government tested everywhere. Uh, and so far, um, obviously, when it comes to the maritime, uh, Border Force are able to turn the boats back. But if it keeps going, my worry is mm. uh, that we're going to see more and more boats coming. OK, the uh, members of the government are, are supposed to be or are being told to, to get out there at the moment during this winter break and uh, campaign about costs of living and all that the government is doing. Meanwhile, we're getting reports this morning that Australians are being warned to expect an increase in everyday items from chocolates to sofas because shipping is being rerouted because of the Houthi rebels. And that's causing delays. That drives up inflation. So there's the flow-on effect here. What can or should be done about all of this, Dan? Well, the government should have been focusing on inflation from the moment it came to office. It's been in office for over two years now and it hasn't been driving down inflation like it should have been. As you know, there's been over $300 billion, so over $30 billion of additional spending. Australians are wondering where the hell that has gone. They haven't been working with the Reserve Bank uh, to drive down interest rates. They haven't been working with the Reserve Bank to make sure that they can drive down inflation. Uh, this is a mess of their own making and this is always the problem when you get these shocks which could occur now from these shipping delays. Uh, it's going to be Australians that pay the price for Labor not having focused solely on driving inflation down over the last two years. OK, still on the government and uh, in DC now, Richard Miles, the Defence Minister, he's uh, pressing, pressing the flesh there as uh, our representative at the NATO summit. He's meeting Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky. He's meeting key congressmen over AUKUS. So these all the right moves... Well, they're the right moves, but what we now need to see is some action. And we need some action in real support for the Ukrainians on the ground. We need to see the government commit to providing spending to help Ukraine defend itself. We saw that horrific attack uh, only the last couple of days where we saw innocent civilians in Ukraine killed after being targeted by the Russians. It's time for the government to stop talking. It's great that we're represented at this summit, but let's see a real, real commitment from the government to help and protect the Ukrainians because mm. the Russians are not letting up. They're using all sorts of tactics which are just horrific and we need to be standing side by side with them. All right. You're in a great part of the, uh, of the far north, Dan. What's happening there today in Townsville? Uh, I'm up here with Phil Thompson. Oh, yeah. uh, we're going to be talking to businesses uh, about uh, skilled migration. Uh, obviously, we want to get young, skilled people into yeah. these parts of the country uh, where there are businesses crying out for work. Uh, we'll be also going to see James Cook University. Looking forward to having a great day with a great yeah. local member, Phil you're Thompson. In a good, you're in a good part of the world there. Dan Tian, thank you.